Good afternoon. My name is Birgitta Sundblad and I'm the president of Invencia. A warm welcome to all of you that have come here today to participate in our launch of both our new Global Outlook report, Paper Making Towards the Future, and also our proposal for a new research program for the coming years. And what could be a more suitable setting than here? at the heart of our paper machine facility, the fax machine, where we normally meet our customers and develop the products of tomorrow, the future paper products. I would also like to send a special welcome to those of you who are participating through the webcast. This is a bit new to us, so we hope it will work properly. But on the web, we have people not only from outside here, the rest of Europe, but also people participating from Americas, India and Asia. And that global setup with all these people, the global audience, actually reflects a bit the journey that Inventia have been through over the last couple of years with a new reach outside the Scandinavian pulp and paper industry uh, to have become a leading international research and innovation partner. Assisting companies along the entire value chain to develop and produce a set of new uh, products from the bio-based materials. Invencia's role as an innovation partner is the result of three modes of thinking. We call them thinking new, thinking, uh, thinking forward and thinking together. And thinking new is all about using resources, knowledge and competence in a new and creative way. Thinking together is about creating innovative partnership with customers and clients. And the Global Outlook reports are as such a thinking ahead initiative, a thinking forward initiative uh, intended to position us a step ahead when we are confronting the market uh, and work with our customers to us the future. Many of you were here already a year ago when we launched our first Outlook report and of course we had hoped that that would be received well but we weren't prepared at all for the impact it had immediately. The report has been generated interest in more than 30 countries over the year, and we have printed more than 4,000 copies in order to meet the demand. So that report really fulfilled the need. And we hope that this report will do as well, of course. And once again, with some financial reports from our friends at RISE, which is uh, one of our part owners, we are now here today to, re to release our second Global Outlook report, Paper Making Towards the Future, in which we are asking the questions, what will future paper products look like? Who are going to produce them and how? The report is partly based on hundreds of interviews with people with some connection to paper. And that are researchers, of course, technicians and industrial leaders, but also end users. In addition to that, we also made an expert survey with more than 150 people participants from 21 different countries and the result from this survey in combination with the interviews and that combined with months of our own work has allowed us to identify key drivers and trends which we believe will be of great importance for the industry. In the report we also outlined a set of possible future scenarios to consider. Creating these scenarios allows us to picture different futures, thinking, thinking critically about the issues and challenges with them, and most importantly, to identify the key factors. Hopefully this report that I find both interesting and inspiring will inspire you as well uh, to new initiative and to en route to a stronger and more sustainable future as we move on another 10 to 20 years at least. With this, I hand over to Paul Krushak, who spent the last six months working heavily on this project to guide you through the highlights in the report. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Gideon. And thank you, everybody, for being here. It's uh, wonderful to see so many people with an interest in the future of, of paper. And actually, there's a lot of open space up here. I wonder if I could invite people in a little bit closer. So my name is Paul Krochak. I'm project manager for paper making towards a future. And well, 
when we began this project, we really had no clear direction. It was like Gideon said, we, we, we released Packaging 2020 about a year ago, and we thought it was a, a really a tremendous success, and we wanted to do something similar with paper making, but we didn't really know what. So the first question we started asking ourselves is, well, what is paper? Is it printing and writing paper only? Should we include packaging? Should we consider everything from the forest, all products made of wood? And as we worked through the project, we started to realize that, yes, paper does go far beyond just printing and writing. It does include packaging. It includes tissue. It includes liner materials. It includes stickers, labels. It includes um, milk, milk containers, shopping bags. It even includes fashion. And the, for now, the word paper making is actually an excellent descriptor for this industry. But this might not be true in 20 years' time with talk of bio-based chemicals, bio-based plastics, energy from biomass coming from the forest, all of this coming together to create the so-called bioeconomy. In 20 years, we might be talking about a, a forest fiber industry or, or a bio-refining industry. But for today, it, today, it's still about paper making. And what the paper making industry does today with our infrastructure, with our, with our knowledge and our experience is, is extremely important. It's going to play a huge role in what, what role we play in this bioeconomy of the future. So I want to begin this presentation by quoting Barack Obama in a speech he made to Congress in 2009 when he said, people, we did not come here today to fear the future. We came here to help shape it. So what role will paper play in creating this bioeconomy? Well, we asked over 150 experts from 21 different countries this very question as part of a Delphi survey. So a Delphi survey is a, an expert survey when the, where the experts are first involved in formulating the most important questions to ask, and then they go on and answer these questions themselves, often iteratively. And so how did our experts answer this question? Well, 2% actually think paper will interfere with the bioeconomy. We certainly hope that they're wrong. Our other experts were actually very evenly divided on, the, on what role paper will play. Paper will serve as a foundation to the bioeconomy. Paper will play a key role initially and then lose its importance. Paper will play only a small role. The bioeconomy will happen with or without paper. Well, once upon a time, there was no talk of a bioeconomy. Once upon a time, it was only about paper. It was about producing as much paper as quickly and efficiently as, as we could. So we began our research in this project by first looking through the history, trying to study the history of this industry. And when you do this, we could start to identify different waves of industrial growth or waves of evolution. Some authors even refer to this as waves of industrial dominance. And these are different time periods since the 1800s where different regions globally, for some reason or another, have, have contributed significantly to the growth or, or even dominated this industry in one way or another. And what's really interesting is to start to analyze these waves and, and analyze the success factors, as we call them frequently throughout the report. And so what do we see? We see, well, industrial papermaking really was born in, in Britain in, in the early 1800s with the invention of the Fourier machine. And the British were actually very good at, at they learned how to capitalize, exploit natural resource, taking the energy from the rivers to drive their processes, using these rivers as transport systems, creating skilled labor, and building up capital. And then we see in the next wave the importance of innovation, innovation in pulping processes, innovation in production efficiency, innovation in new products. And then as this innovation carried over into the next wave, we start to see the importance of raw material availability local raw material availability. We start to see the importance of government support, governments which back a long-term vision of growth for the industry, governments which facilitate free trade or, or international trade. And now, perhaps most importantly, we see the importance of demand, and specifically local demand. But 200 years of industrial growth is now changing. We're seeing global landscapes are changing. We're seeing changes in economies of scale. We're even seeing changes in consumer demands, market segments. And we're seeing changes in the industry. And so when we began this project, as I said, we really had no direction. So the very first thing we did was we started interviewing people. 
we started talking to the experts. We started talking to leading global researchers in the field. We started talking to CEOs, marketing directors at the biggest and the smallest companies around the world, paper companies. We talked with non-governmental organizations. We spoke with media companies who depend on paper for, for their communication, for advertising. We even spoke with users of end products. And the very first question we asked was, what type of products will be most important for the industry in the coming 20 years? And this is where, again, we started to see the industry, the experts are very divided on the, on the future, and they were very divided on this question. Half of them said, well, this is a, a, an industry which depends on traditional products. We depend on mass-produced products. We need to continue speaking of X thousand tons per year. And the other half said, no, no, no. We need to start develop, developing new products. We need to start integrating new technologies. We need to start creating specialty products, products which will be produced in very small batches, but with extremely high profit margins. Well, whichever types of products the future might hold for this industry, certain product features started to resonate throughout this project with ourselves, with our experts. So we asked our, our experts in the Delphi survey, which features of paper will be most desirable in the coming 10, 20 years time? So these results actually, we found quite surprising. Look at the top three. Environment and or health safety. Interactive and intelligent. Recyclability. The types of properties paper makers usually talk about with, with paper, we talk about strength and weight and printability. These rank very low on the list. And it's actually really interesting, two of the top three aren't even properties, physical properties of the product ex itself. And this reflects the fact that the industry is transforming, it's changing, it's starting to look beyond the pro pro products it's used to producing and looking out at the external world, looking towards its customers, looking towards the important issues on sustainability, on the environment, and starting to address these before dr addressing what they're used to doing. But before we try and understand the future of this industry, before we try and understand the future of any industry or any business, we have to step back and look around us and look at the world at large. We have to start asking ourselves questions about what's driving change in society? What's driving change in business structures? What's driving changes in consumer trends? So in the report, we define or we describe what we call global drivers of change. And, and we, we, we describe what we believe are the five most important. So here I want to just discuss, quickly discuss two of them. The first we call from static to smart. We all know the world's going digital. How many people in this room have a smartphone? Actually, a better question is how many people don't have a smartphone? That's what I thought. Interactive, intelligent, customized, adaptable to our unique likes and dislikes. These are the features of the products of the future. And if whatever products don't have these features, they have to be able to integrate interact with products that do have these features. So we, we also conducted a, a student survey. We surveyed 80 second year university students and we asked them, which feature would you most like to see in paper? If you could, if you could have any choice, and we actually gave them a choice of about 25, but nearly every single one of them said electronic paper. From a Western world to a global urban middle class, the global urban middle class is a, an extremely populated group of people. They're well educated, they're employed, they're in search of a better life. There's a tremendous amount of buying power in this group. These are people who are regularly buying household products, life bettering products, daily products. And this is perhaps where new market seg segments will find the greatest growth in the future. So now we've looked at our history, we've looked at the world around us. We then turn to the industry today, and we identify what we believe are the nine most important growing trends for this industry going forward. So here I want to name, discuss five of them. Does this look familiar to anyone? We know that demand for printing and writing grades has been declining for years. We know that demand for newsprint has been declining for over a decade now. People are searching for intelligent, interactive, customized media sources. The once nouns of the digital world, Facebook and Twitter, have now become verbs. Just the other day, it was a beautiful day in Stockholm, and a friend sent me a message and said, I'm out Facebooking in the sun. But the industry has, we're seeing continued and consistent growth in, in packaging segments. We're seeing strong growth in tissue products in almost every part of the world. 
And beyond this, there's literally thousands of other specialty niche products where producers are finding tremendous profit. Resource efficient production. Resource efficiency has always been important to this industry and it always will be. With increasing public concern over the environment, with strict government regulation regarding pollution, waste handling, and then threats of short, fresh water shortage, energy supplies diminishing, uh, raw materials disappearing. Resource efficiency should be more important now than ever before. But these sustainability issues, initiatives aimed at resource efficiency, not only do they help improve company images, but they actually lead directly to profitability. And we asked our experts in our survey, which areas will the industry find the greatest profit in the future? Bioplastics, biochemicals, bioenergy, biotextiles, of course, paper and board. And all this together, we see a trend from paper to pulp to bio business. But I think the most interesting trend is that we're seeing a shift in industrial thinking. We're seeing a shift towards what we call demand-driven innovation. We're seeing that the industry is, is making huge innovations in, in marketing and organizational structures. The industry by itself is developing new products, selling them directly to customers, positioning themselves at the top of the value chain where the greatest profit can be found. But it's the brave businesses, the daring companies that are leading this transformation. But still there was one trend which we found rather concerning, I would say even a little bit scary. We asked our, our experts, what resources will be in shortest supply in the coming 10 years? Skilled labor ranked at the top. For an industry on the brink of transformation, securing the next generation of young innovators, young talent, highly skilled personnel should be at the forefront of everybody's agenda right now. So now we've looked at our history, we've looked at the world around us, what's driving change in the world. We've looked at the industry today, what are the most important trends going forward. We've interviewed experts, we've conducted surveys, we're ready now to take all this information and project it forward into something we call the likely future. So this is our vision of the paper industry in the year 2030. Everything will be digital and paper will be electronic too. Paper will have sensors built into packaging indicating shelf life, indicating the quality of their contents, indicating the authenticity of the perfumes that they're containing. Paper itself can serve as a substrate for electronics, it can serve as a substrate for solar panels, for a num number of other applications. And those paper products which aren't built with electronics will be interacting synergistically with computers and other smart devices. Energy. We believe that oil reserves will eventually become de depleted and this will drive up energy prices in the long term. But this can be a good thing because this is going to create an increased demand for renewable resources, for, for sorry, renewable energy, energy from the, from the wind, the sun, and of course biomass from the forest. Product safety. Product safety will be at the forefront of everyone's agenda. The industry will take full responsibility for the products it's producing, It'll take responsibility for the chemicals it uses during production, the safety of its workers. And it'll take a proactive stance on this, not simply a reactive one responding to the latest media scares or health threats. And of course, the bioeconomy will be realized. The entire world will be supported by the forests and sustainable sources. Everything, all of our daily products, including chemicals, uh, plastics, building materials, energy, of course, paper and packaging, this will all come from plants and trees. Even sporting equipment, cars and trains can come from carbon fiber derived from lignin, a byproduct of the pulping process. And where will the industry fit in all this? We asked our experts, where will we see the greatest return on, return on investment in the coming 10 years? Biorefining ranked at the top. But still the future is uncertain, always impossible to predict. And even at the end of this project, there was some issues where we couldn't seem to come to agreement on, either within the project group, our experts. And the, the, these uncertainties, there, there was still some uncertainties. And so one way of handling these uncertainties is through something called future scenarios analysis. 
So with future scenarios analysis, what we do is we take the information which we believe to be true about the future, and then we superimpose these uncertainties on top of these certain trends, and we extend them to their extremes, and then we try and create worlds. We, we envision the world with these uncertainties at their extremes, and then we study these scenarios, and we analyze them. We can prepare business strategies. So some people refer to scenarios as memories of the future, but at the very least, they prepare us in mind for futures which we may not have already thought of. So as part of this project, we, we performed two full-day workshops with top researchers and management from Inventia in Stockholm, Inventia in Norway. We brought in experts from the industry. And we started, we looked at our history. We looked at the world around us, at drivers. We looked at trends within the industry, growing trends, mature trends, even phenomena. We looked at potential disruptive for forces, game changers, black swans. And at the end, we came up with three unique scenarios for the industry to consider. And this is what we came up with. Recycling. What if recycling were mandatory by law? And not just a little recycling, but a lot. What if all the products we produced were required by law to contain a certain amount of recycled material? 50%, 80%, even 90%. How would the, how would the industry cope with this? Product spectrum. What if these traditional made-to-scope type products couldn't be sold? What if we had to design every single product from the ground up with the customer, with the brand owner? And we had to produce dozens of different products like this every day. What if we had to do this with more or less the same infrastructure which we have today? How would the, how would the industry thrive in such a future? And energy, what if instead of becoming extremely expensive, energy became extremely inexpensive? What if it became almost free? This could be the most revolutionary and potentially catastrophic event all at once. Regardless of what the future holds for us, we do believe that the paper industry is, is very well positioned to be a part of this bioeconomy, even to drive and support this bioeconomy, to be a foundation for this bioeconomy. But we have, some, we have some challenges before we get there. We need to find paper's rightful place in society. For those products which aren't integrated with electronics, we need to remarket their strong points and pull out of market segments where we just can't compete. So we, we asked, one question we asked our university students in, in their survey, we asked them, what products, what paper products could you absolutely not live without in the coming 20 years? And again, we gave them about 25 different choices. And half of them, almost half of them, the, the students too were very divided. Almost half of them said, Printing, writing, reading, and book paper specifically for learning. And the other half, very wisely, chose toilet paper. <laughs> we need to learn to manage risks. We need to learn to take and manage risks. By managing risks effectively, this is the only way that profit can ever be realized. The industry has been accused in the past of being too shy. And this is a trend we need to break. This is something we need to, we need to work on. And above all, we need to innovate aggressively. We need to innovate, innovate, if innovate every single day. It's like Bill Gates says with regards to innovation, I'm always 18 months away from bankruptcy. So this brings us to the end of my presentation, the end of, I, ho I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and this little journey through paper making towards the future. Well, this is actually a bit of a longer slide, so I have to refer to my notes on paper. Some of us still depend on paper. Paper is a part of our lives and will continue to be so for the foreseeable future. The technical advancements in paper production leave most other industries far behind. Now paper making is industry undergoing transformation, perhaps even more so in the coming 20 years. Paper making may soon be about more than just paper packaging and tissue. Paper may one day be known to created a bio-based world where everything in it is sustainable and everything is recyclable. Whichever direction the future takes us, we hope we've encouraged you to think forwardly and to think actively. And above all, we hope that you choose to think forward with us. Thank you.